Welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sounds like I had some sediment in my throat or something. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Let's talk about fossils. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, at least for this section. Uh, <clears throat> so there can be biologic content in sedimentary rock. Um, fossils are, are, are going to be th that material. For the most part. So remember, fossils are the remains or traces of prehistoric organisms. <clears throat> when we're finding fossils in rocks, we can use those to make those biostratigraphic units. <clears throat> Sometimes they're just important constituents of certain sedimentary rocks, and they might make up some, most, or all of a sedimentary rock. And it's also, uh, they're also important for, again, determining depositional environments. <laughs> Some rocks, <coughs> excuse me, like limestone, are composed, <coughs> certain limestones, I should say, are composed largely of uh, shells of ocean animals, marine dwelling animals, or even, <laughs> it's fun, or even the droppings, poo poo, of <laughs> these organisms. Uh, one example is a type of limestone that you see there called uh, coquina. Coquina is made of entirely of cemented together shell fragments. So all of these little pieces that you see. <clears throat> are little in small little pieces of shell fragment that have been cemented together. Um, they're not necessarily large. This is just a very zoomed in view on a small rock, <clears throat> and it's a type of limestone again called coquina. So environmentally, um, those type of rocks also give us information. So do the organisms that we're seeing, the fossils that we're seeing in question, live where they were buried, or were the remains uh, or fossils transported there? So does this rock tell me about things that were living where this was deposited, or things that were transported there? Example, <clears throat> if you find dinosaur fossils, usually, you know, that indicates deposition in some sort of land environment, um, so maybe some sort of river, floodplain, edge of a stream, edge of a lake, some sort, something like that. However, if you're finding dinosaur fossils and it's found in the same type of rocks with clams, corals, sea lilies, other type of sea life, then when that organism died, we'd assume that carcass, the dead carcass, was washed out to sea where it uh, sank to the bottom, buried in sediment, later became sedimentary rock. So when we're, again, looking at these rocks and or fossils in these rocks, it helps us with an environmental analysis. <clears throat> what kind of habitat did the organism originally occupy? Um, it, these, uh, studying these rocks also helps to not only um, study a particular fossil structure, um, it, but um, it helps with the, the living relatives as well. It helps to establish the kind of line of evolution. For example, uh, clams with heavy, thick shells typically live in kind of shallow, turbulent, very choppy, very moving water, whereas those with thin shells are found in low energy environments. So if we're looking at the fossil structure, it helps, helps us, again, figure out even subtler environmental analysis. Um, if we're finding corals in rocks, fossils of corals in rocks, again, most corals live in kind of warm and clear, very shallow marine environments um, where the process of photosynthesis could take place, meaning <clears throat> corals don't live deep on the ocean floor. They live on the ocean floor that's where it's kind of shallow because they need sunlight. If they lived any deeper, that sunlight would become less and less and less, and they couldn't survive with their symbi symbiotic bacteria. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we also have microfossils, and these are uh, particularly useful um, because you can recover hundreds, thousands, millions of these, even from small rock samples, if you know what you look for. Some geologists specialize, for instance, just in microfossils. Um, in oil drilling, one way to figure out oil is that we don't necessarily know where all the oil is. To do that, you drill down and you look at rock samples called core samples. You like what you see, you drill a little bit more. You don't like what you're seeing in the rocks, well then go somewhere else. You're trying to that's how you find oil. You just kind of somewhat guess based on geology. You make a, a educated guess. But in oil drilling operations, um 
you're you're bringing you know again these small little pieces of, of material up and you can analyze those um they again contain these sort of fossils rarely contain large fossils more so um, thousands of microfossils, um, and those all aid, uh, aid in relative dating and environmental analysis. So even these microorganisms, where did they live? Um, these microorganisms, when did they live? So we can relatively date these things. <laughs> um, so yeah, fossils, beyond just identifying the organism, beyond identifying just the organism itself, Fossils do a, a great job of getting even s telling us about the environment, maybe the environment the organism grew up in, lived in, or was transported to. But they also do a, a great job of kind of narrowing in um, the environment. Again, for example, like corals. Okay, so corals, I know they live in the ocean. Great. Where in the ocean? Oh, warm, shallow oceans. Oh, okay. So they kind of narrow, narrow things in that maybe just the rock itself couldn't do. But as we analyze these fossils, whether they're big or micro fossils, helps us to kind of narrow it in. <clears throat> so, okay, when we come, when we come back, um, we'll look at uh, specific depositional environments now. Now that we've kind of discussed how some of these rocks and structures could indicate depositional environments. We'll talk about those depositional environments and you know what we see now to help us infer what sort of depositional environment the sediment was originally deposited in. Again, helping to tell that story of Earth. So let's pause here. We'll see you back in just a second. <laughs> 